This video is looking at the rehabilitation procedures. This is our first dot point for how is injury rehabilitation managed. Our syllabus says that we need to uh, think of rehabilitation procedures in terms of progressive mobilisation, uh, graduated exercise, which includes stretching, conditioning and total body fitness. Uh, we also have to think about training and the use of heat and cold within our rehabilitation procedures. With that knowledge, you then have to examine and justify those rehabilitation procedures that are used for a range of specific issue, um, injuries, such as a hamstring tear or a shoulder dislocation. So progressive mobilisation is our first little dash point here for this dot point. Essentially what you need to think about here is about the slow increase um, in the range of motion that's at a particular joint. Now this relates a bit to stretching which is going to come up in graduated exercise as well. But essentially um, after injury your joint gets stiff, it gets tight, uh, your muscles are going to get tired and stuff. Um, there's not enough fluid in your joint so it, its movement isn't going to be nice and smooth. Uh, it gives it that stiff feeling. And so this progressive mobilization is going to slowly increase the joint's range of motion. Uh, you want to start progressive mobilization in a joint as early as possible. So uh, whether that be after surgery or whether that be after uh, just a small tear in your hamstring or something, you want to make sure uh, that you're starting as early as you can, making sure that you keep your full range of uh, motion uh, available at your joint. It helps to make sure that uh, you're having less scar tissue develop and it helps to maintain um, the length of your muscle and stuff as it repairs itself. Uh, but when you're doing progressive mobilization, it's very important to make sure uh, that that um, slow increase in range of motion is pain-free. You don't want to be taking the person to the point of pain uh, with all stretching and stuff. Uh, same applies to progressive mobilization. Slight discomfort, not pain, uh, so that you're getting the appropriate benefits from it. Graduated exercise. Now we're going to have a look at three different things within graduated exercise here. Uh, but the first thing you need to know about graduated exercise is that graduated means gradual. Okay, so we're going to have gradual increases uh, in range of motion, in intensity, in uh, the number of joints, uh, the specification for the sport, etc. So we're going to start really very simple, very basic because the person is recovering from an injury and we're going to progress um, slowly and gradually increasing the intensity or increasing the range of motion uh, or increasing uh, the specificity of the movements or the whole body movement rather than an isolated specific movement and so that gradual increase is what graduated exercise is all about. So the first thing for graduate exercise, our first little uh, thing in the brackets for your syllabus is stretching and stretching uh, when it comes to uh, rehabilitation generally there's only three forms of stretching that are going to be used ballistic stretching is generally not used within rehabilitation uh, so our most uh, easy, our most simple stretch is the static stretch. Uh, it's the one where you're holding it for about 30 seconds or something. Um, and so that static stretch is normally the one that's used uh, towards the beginning where the athlete might be stretching their hamstring just a little bit after a hamstring tear. Um, the PNF stretching then is a level above that because it involves um, a static contraction, an isometric contraction along with the static stretching. Uh, and then we move from that to the more dynamic stretching where the athlete is uh, constantly moving throughout the full range of motion or at least through the range of motion that they have uh, and that tends to be um, later in our rehabilitation normally as we start to look at the conditioning and the total body training we'll start to include some dynamic stretching. Uh, I should mention it's very important to know that uh, within graduated exercise this stretching, um, conditioning and total body fitness uh, although they are kind of you know one after the other, they also overlap a bit. Uh, so it's important to notice where those overlaps might occur and make sure that you cater for those if you are ever answering a HSC question. The next thing for graduated exercise is conditioning. So conditioning is essentially about the muscles uh, either around the joint that just got injured or the muscle that was injured and often if it's a muscle that was injured uh, there'll be an antagonist muscle that also will begin to be weakened because of the injury because you're not going to use that part of your body uh, while it's injured. So with conditioning the first thing that you want to try and improve is the muscle strength. So you're going to do that nice and slow with uh, high levels of RM. Uh, you're not going to be doing really big weight lifting or anything, you're doing small 
uh, kinds of movements, uh, maybe even isometric contractions and stuff uh, before we move on to the isotonic ones or whatever. Um, but those contractions are all generally kind of joint or injury specific. So uh, if it's a hamstring tear, it's about slowly building up that strength again in the hamstring. Uh, you then move from strength towards endurance. So that's muscular endurance, okay, not cardiorespiratory endurance. So now you're looking at um, using that muscle repeatedly uh, and for a period of time. So if it's a hamstring, they might then go for a walk. They might um, do some very slow sit stands or something like that that works the hamstrings out, um, but you, is not a highly intense exercise that you can do over and over again uh, to essentially get that muscular endurance back into that muscle that's been injured or back into the joint if it's a shoulder that's been dislocated or something you might slowly start to uh, introduce uh, more and more movements uh, like uh, push-ups or um, something it may be even something that's lighter than that so you might do a bench press but with lighter weights uh, so that you're increasing your endurance in that in your muscle around your shoulder you then move from endurance into speed and power so speed is about making sure that muscle can contract quickly uh, so making sure that hamstring then is starting to contract nice and fast uh, and then you move from that into power because power is the combination of strength and speed um, and so you want to make sure you keep that speed and the strength before you then progress into doing any kind of power training and again power training is going to come towards the end generally as you're starting to look at your, um, your whole body training and you're starting to look to return uh, to play so graduated exercise looking at total body fitness so total body fitness really is all the different health and skill related components of fitness. Uh, when you're injured, you want to maintain as many of those as you can uh, and you want to maintain it on as much of your body as you can. So obviously your part is injured. So if you dislocate your shoulder, you then can't you essentially use that whole arm uh, for any kind of movements. But it doesn't mean you can't use your other arm and it doesn't mean you can't use your lower body uh, in order to maintain some kind of uh, level of body fitness. Uh, so you can start to get involved in things, but again, making sure you're not doing things that are going to hurt your um, your dislocated shoulder or anything like that. Uh, it helps to avoid reversibility. So if you've dislocated your shoulder and you're riding a bike in the gym, it helps to maintain your cardiorespiratory fitness um, while you're doing that. Obviously, it's not going to maintain everything uh, because you're not still participating in your sport. You're not still doing it at the level that you used to be in. Um, you're still not even running necessarily because running will probably hurt uh, a dislocated shoulder as it recovers. So uh, it's essentially just avoiding as much reversibility as you can and helping you to return to your pre-injury fitness levels as quickly as you can. So if we're looking at this in terms of gradual, um, gradually moving along from stretching to conditioning to total body fitness, uh, once you've started to do your conditioning and your hamstring is quite strong, uh, for example, you can then go and start to look at uh, doing running and stuff uh, and doing uh, more larger body movements that are looking to restore your total body fitness. Uh, often total body fitness is going to focus mostly on your cardiorespiratory fitness, but that will depend too on the sport that the person's going back to and what injury they had. The next dashboard looks at training. So training uh, is about returning to your uh, specific sport. So once you've done your total body fitness and you've essentially recovered yourself to a particular point, you then need to start getting yourself back into the sport that you were playing originally. So if you tore your hamstring while playing football or soccer or something, uh, then you want to gradually return into that sport. So it's one thing to be able to go for a long jog uh, or even to do um, a beep test or something. It's another thing to then take that whole body fitness and transfer it into soccer, uh, where you are then required to kick, you're required to tackle, you're required to change direction quickly, uh, to avoid players while being knocked over and stuff. It places different stresses and different forces onto your body. Uh, and so as you return, your training in the sport will also be graduated. So you're gonna slowly uh, increase in intensity and increase the range of different movements and activities that the person's going to do, getting them ready so that they're back to their full match fitness. So they've done their case basic uh, body fitness and now we're looking at getting them back to their match fitness. Uh, this is also done, so depending on the injury, you can do some training uh, while they're injured within their sport if they can. So if they've, for example, just dislocated a finger or something, then they can pretty much continue in their normal training for quite a long time, unless, of course, they're a goalkeeper, in which case they can't. 
Um, but you're looking at you know, you're maintaining that match fitness as much as you can. It helps them to return to their pre-injury fitness levels, so not just their kind of basic fitness, but also their sport-specific fitness, making sure all those components of fitness are strong and ready to go for that sport. Uh, as I've said, always sport-specific, so the components, uh, the skills are involved in the sport, so whether that be kicking, passing, catching, throwing, whatever it happens to be, hitting something, uh, all those skills need to be um, refined again. So they would, if it's an elite athlete, they would have lost some of uh, the level that they were performing at. And so they need to refine that skill again to make sure they're back to being able to compete at the level that they used to be at. Uh, they also need to learn to read the game again. Not that they're going to have completely forgotten that, but again, they wouldn't have been using it. Uh, while they were out injured and so it just helps to refine that again and also will help to build their confidence so the more time they have in the sport uh, kicking a ball catching a ball whatever it happens to be the more time they get to do that and success they have with it and then allows them to be more confident when they enter into actual competition and that then enables them to return to play a lot more safely because they've gone through that progression of uh, doing some uh, general increase in joint mobility doing some stretching doing some conditioning and recovery around the injury and then doing some total body fitness, then get doing some training that helps them to be uh, particularly specifically ready for uh, their sport that they were playing in, helping to make sure that they return in a safe manner. Throughout all rehabilitation, uh, generally people will use heat and they'll use cold. The reasons why people use heat is that it increases blood flow to the injured area uh, now this might be beneficial if you uh, want to deliver more nutrients to that area you need to warm that area up um, so generally just before a treatment someone probably will use some heat it'll help to relax the area make it a bit more stretchy so that when they're doing their stretching they can go a bit further it'll also uh, help to kind of get rid of that joint stiffness and stuff uh, it will cause a bit of inflammation uh, but not too much uh, unless, of course, the site has kind of recently been re-injured. So you wouldn't use heat, for example, after a treatment for an injury uh, because the treatment itself will generally stimulate a certain amount of inflammation. And if you then add heat to that, it's going to make it worse. Um, it is going to increase your flexibility and it's going to help in tissue repair because you're getting all those extra nutrients back to the, um, to the site of injury, which then allows that site to recover faster. There's quite a range of examples of use of heat. So it can be as simple as a heat pack, but uh, also can be you know, UV lights or um, infrared uh, heating as well can be used. Uh, then you can go even deeper and you start to look at like ultrasound waves or microwaves that might be used to help um, heat the deeper tissues within the body depending on where that injury has been sustained. When it comes to cold, cold obviously does the opposite of heat. So heat you're using maybe before a treatment, cold you're going to use after your treatments and also in the immediate treatment of the injury. So ice obviously is in our rice treatment for any soft tissue injury. So you're looking at um, using that ice to decrease blood flow, which then helps to decrease bleeding. Uh, it's going to decrease the inflammation and also reduce the pain. Uh, so it's particularly good after a treatment because it's going to help uh, control that inflammation that comes after a treatment. Uh, but it's also going to be particularly good for reducing any kind of pain that comes from a treatment because often treatments will cause a slight amount of pain for the athlete. Uh, and then decreasing blood flow, uh, particularly if there's some kind of bleeding, the ice will be very beneficial for that. And of course, there's a range of different ways of using cold. So cold, the technical term for using cold is cryotherapy when it's rehabilitation. And so down the bottom here, you can see a cryotherapy chamber, which completely cools the entire body of the athlete. Uh, that's used as one of the recovery strategies that you'll learn about uh, later for PDHPE. But it's essentially one form of using cold. You can use ice bars, you can use ice packs. Um, you can even just use cold water if you like. So many different ways of just applying cold to the injured area.